Hello my Fly Mickey friends and welcome to the latest news from the world of Disney. And on this week's episode, Disneyland Paris introduces PCR testing for guests. Happily Ever After gets a new opening announcement. And Disney Cruise Line pushes back its trial sailings. Now before we take a look at this week's update, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, give this video a like and click the bell icon to stay in the know about all things Disney. So first off this week and chairman of the Disney Parks, Josh DeMauro, in an interview with the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions for their publication Fun World, discussed Disney's innovations, inclusivity, struggles of the last year and what they plan for the future. In the article, DeMauro, who stepped into the role at the start of the pandemic in 2020, found himself in a unique position of navigating an unprecedented time for the company, saying, I was humbled by the situation I found myself in. Given where we were, I felt an immediate and massive sense of responsibility to be sitting in this role for a place that I care so much about with so many cast members who were looking for guidance. He went on to congratulate the cast members of Shanghai Disney Resort and Hong Kong Disneyland for the successful reopenings of their Disney parks worldwide, creating a blueprint template that could then be taken, adapted and applied across the rest of the company's destinations. He also discussed leading the charge on the various inclusivity changes around the parks paying tribute to Walt Disney himself for leading the way to the company's legacy and at the same time the push to be relevant today, making reference to the addition of the fifth key of inclusion to the infamous four keys of service that every cast member strives to represent when working for the Walt Disney Company. The addition of inclusion to the tenant of the Disney parks led to a series of changes that are still ongoing, including an updated Disney look for cast members and alterations to attractions and shows. We will continue to not only look at the experiences that we have today, update them and make them more relevant and appropriate, but as we build, we will also start to think about all the great stories that we have to tell around the world and bring them to life in a way that everybody again can see themselves, says DeMauro. He finished off the article by reiterating that some of the changes born from the pandemic like the reservation system, may be here to stay, including taking credit for the disillusion of the Disneyland annual pass holder program, citing the idea as an opportunity to offer more choice, greater flexibility, and drive value to the resort's fan base like they've never seen before. So Walt Disney World has removed its long-time greeting, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, from its Magic Kingdom fireworks show. This is to promote inclusivity, and they've replaced it with one that starts off saying, Good evening, dreamers of all ages. On Wednesday last week, Disney World employees were invited to a cast member preview of the Happily Ever After fireworks show at the Magic Kingdom. While the fireworks show itself remains virtually the same as previous years, the show's opening greeting has been updated. The preview was the first fireworks show hosted at Disney World since its nightly shows were halted at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic some 15 months ago. Jack Wagner, known as the voice of Disney, estimated that he'd uttered the phrase over 8 million times during his two-decade tenure as park announcer for Disneyland, Disney World and Tokyo Disney Resort. But now is the right time for the announcement to be updated for a new and more inclusive Walt Disney Company. Some social media fans, though, have called the decision completely unnecessary and overtly sensitive. However, most commentators online were quite supportive of the change, with one user replying, I love dreamers of all ages because it really makes you feel super snuggly and makes your day even more magical. It's just so Disney heartwarming. In March, the same change was made at Tokyo Disney Resort, replacing ladies and gentlemen with welcome everyone in the park's opening announcement 
to promote gender inclusivity. The change initially came from the Oriental Land Company, which licenses the Disney brand, its characters and their likenesses for the parks. The changes though only affected the English announcements, as the Japanese versions have always used a gender neutral term. The latest greeting change, along with featuring same-sex couples and children with disabilities on the covers of the Park Guide maps, comes after numerous efforts in recent months and years to become more welcoming to all types of visitors within the Disney parks around the world. Now, while Europe strives ahead with its plan for welcoming back tourism across the union of countries, Disneyland Paris has stepped in to help guests who need to have a test before traveling back home by opening a PCR COVID test center within the Disney Village. The testing center is being done in partnership with Loxamed and operated by experienced medical professionals so that before your departure, you can guarantee a smooth onward journey after your days of magic. Since COVID tests are no longer free for tourists in France starting from July the 7th, this is a very welcomed additional effort by the Disneyland Paris Resort Management. The site will operate between 8am and 8pm daily and prices are capped at €49 Euros for a PCR test and €29 Euros for the rapid result antigen test alternative. There is however an additional €20 Euro admin fee applied to every screening. Prior appointments and payment is required for the Disneyland Paris testing site, so fans who would like to book an appointment or check out more details can do so via the link in the description below. Now, the Disneyland Hotel has begun a phased reopening this weekend just gone, with only the Fantasy Tower available to guests at this time. This reopening will finally see all three Disneyland Resort hotels open at the same time for the first time since they all closed in March of 2020. Disney's Grand Californian Hotel opened back in April and the Paradise Pier Hotel reopened on June the 15th. Along with the Fantasy Tower, the hotel's two pools and iconic monorail water slides will also be open as well as the fitness center and the poolside cabanas too but you'll have to pay an additional fee to reserve those as has been the case with the other two resort hotels the disneyland hotel will open without some guest benefits and amenities for example a light cleaning service is offered only every other day of your stay and valet parking and room services are no longer available with club level members no longer having access to some of their amenities certainly for now anyway steakhouse 55 the steakhouse lounge and goofy's kitchen all remain closed too but tangaroa terrace the hotel's quick service dining location as well as the coffee house will be open and the very popular trader sam's enchanted tiki bar too will reopen but only as a table service restaurant though disney has yet to release any operating hours for these locations on-site hotel guests are encouraged though to dine in downtown disney at one of the restaurants of the grand californian hotel or to order from a participating downtown Disney restaurant that will then deliver to your hotel lobby. This is in order to help with maintaining those COVID safety standards. And finally, Disney Cruise Line has been forced to postpone a test cruise scheduled for this week after a handful of its crew members tested positive for COVID-19, the company has confirmed. The test sailing, which was expected to take off from Florida on a two-night cruise with volunteers on the Disney Dream, will now be postponed until sometime in July, pending approval. Test cruises are required by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for all cruise lines, unless 98% of crew and 95% of passengers are fully vaccinated. On the Disney Dream, five crew members tested positive for the virus last week during a routine surveillance testing session. These crew then tested negative in follow-up testing the next day, but a Disney Cruise Line spokeswoman said the results are considered inconsistent and therefore are treated as positive cases. The affected employees, part of a crew of nearly 600 cast members, are all asymptomatic and all had been recently vaccinated. Disney was approved earlier this month to begin test cruising, which must sail with volunteers who are at least 18 years of age and who agreed to post-trip testing and sample collections. 
The postponement comes days after some Disney Magic at Sea UK staycation cruisers received emails from the Disney Cruise Line company stating that due to the UK government's extension of the date by which the capacity limitations were to be lifted, the company has been left with little choice but to cancel a number of bookings, generally for those on the earlier sailings out of Liverpool. Disney Cruise Line are offering affected customers alternative options, including discounted rates on future sailings. If you are worried about your booking for the Magic at Sea staycations, we would recommend you contact your booking agent today to confirm your sailing. And that's it for this week's news update. Don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Fly Mickey Travel. And now join us on the Clubhouse app at the Disney Travel Club so you'll never miss out on those magic moments of the world of Disney. And all that's left to say is have a happily ever after magical day. Oh,